Hello everybody, it's Jamie and welcome back again to a ship story video. Today we're going to talk about one of the big four White Star Liners, the RMS Adriatic, uh, a fine liner of the White Star Lines, uh, like I said. So with that out of the way, let's begin. So of course we're first going to start with the first chapter and that's her building. At the end of the 19th century, White Star Line, under the leadership of Thomas Henry Ismay, changed its policy to embark on the construction of ships which no longer sought to dominate in the area of speed, but to transport passengers en masse and regularly on spacious and comfortable liners. This resulted in the commissioning of the Big Four. Four large moderate speed liners ordered at the start of the new century. The first, the Celtic, entered service in 1901, followed by the Cedric in 1903 and the Baltic in 1904. The fourth ship in the series, the, Adria the Adria Adriatic, was ordered from Harlander Wharf shipyards in Belfast in December 1903, but she wasn't completed until May 1907. A strangely long delay. This delay could be explained by the fact that the shipyards were building the America at the same time, with a similar profile. Holland and Wolf built Adriatic on slipway number 3 of its north yacht in Belfast Island. To continue to own, to continue to own the largest ships in the world, White Star had asked the shipyards to enlarge the Baltic during its construction. The ship measured nearly 3000 tons more than its predecessor, but it was in return slightly slower. Its machines not having been modified, not, not having been, been, been modified. In the, case, in the case of the Adriatic, it was decided to give her a size similar to the Baltic, her tonnage never, nevertheless surpassing that one of the Baltic by a few hundred tons. But she was equipped significantly more powerful, powerful machines in order to allow, allow her to maintain a better speed. Her name in reference to the Adriatic Sea was also given to her in reference to a previous liner of the same name, which served the company for almost 30 years at the end of the previous century. century. The Adriatic was launched on 20 September 1906 the same day as the Cunard's line Mauritania. She was then completed in dry, in dry dock and delivered to her company on 25 April 1907, before sailing to Liverpool for her maiden voyage. Now we move on to part 2, her early life. When the Adriatic entered service, she was celebrated by the White Star Line as the largest ship in the world. Although the Kaiserin Augusta Victoria overtook it by a few tons, and the company organized a departure with a great fanfare for her maiden voyage from Liverpool to New York on 8 May 1907. The liner sails under the command of Captain Edward Smith, who transferred from the Baltic. After her maiden voyage, she was transferred to the, to the Southampton New York route, inaugurating White Star Line's Southampton service. She was the first White Star Liner she was the first White Star Liner to use Southampton's newly built dock named the White Star, the White Star Dock. In 1922 it was renamed to the Ocean Dock. This port held Herto little frequent by the British companies was indeed chosen to serve as class liners. It also had the adventure advantage of allowing of allowing a French stopover in Cherbourg. The Adriatic was thus assigned to this new service along the Oceanic, the Teutonic and the Majestic at the same time. At the same time Liverpool becomes a secondary port for departure for services provided by the Baltic, the Cedric, the Celtic and the Arabic. The Adriatic ran the Southampton route until 1911, when RMS Olympic replaced her. 
Adriatic then returned to Liver Adriatic then returned to the Liverpool route. During this service, the Adriatic proved to be very popular with customers for her luxurious facilities. She was the first liner to have a Turkish bath and an indoor swimming pool, despite the lower speed than her, follow, than her fellow liners. An incident occurred on 10 October 1908, when it was discovered that four crew members were stealing passenger luggage and concealing it in the ships, in the ships for sub, subsequent resale. The booty is estimated at £4,000. A very significant sum for the time. Another incident occurred in November 1909 when the liner ran aground in the entrance to the Am Ambrose Channel on its way to New York. Then in August 1910 when the liner stokers muti mutineered in Southampton on 26 June 1911 following the entry into service of the Olympic. The Adriatic made her last crossing from Southampton before joining her sister ships on the Liverpool route. She remained there until World War I. Although she also made cruises between New York and the Mediterranean during the winter of 1911. Adriatic sailed from Liverpool on 18, on 18 April 1912 and arrived in New York on 27 April 1912. Some of the... Some of Titanic's rescued passengers and crew returned to Britain on board her, departing from New York on 2 May 19, 1912. The passengers included disgraced White Star Line chairman J. Bruce Ismay and Milvina Dean, the disaster's youngest and last living survivor. But sadly she would meet war, and that's the next chapter. When World War I b broke out, the Adriatic and the Baltic continued to provide regular service on the Liverpool route while other White Star Liners were requisitioned. They were quickly joined by the three ships of the Red Star Line, the Vaderland, the Zeeland and the Lapland. The Adriatic's large cargo hold enabled her to carry large quantities of provisions in wartime, but US authorities then neutral in the conflict, viewed the ship with suspicion, fearing she might make a secret stopover in Halifax to recover Canadian troops. From 12 April 1917 to 28 February 1919, the ship served under the liner requisition scheme and carried troops and ammunition across the Atlantic after the entry by the United States into the war. During the war, the bunkers of the, of the Adriatic were of, often used to supply the Royal Navy with fuel. During this period, on 26 January 1918, while docked at Pier 60 in New York, she was the victim of a fire when barrels of the oil stored, of oil stored on her deck caught fire. The firefighters managed to control the flames by flooding the bridge and throwing the burnt barrels into the sea. When the war was over, the liner was fully refurbished and her facilities were modified to carry fewer passengers. Now we move to the last chapter of the story, her later life and her uh, demise. The Adriatic returned to service on 3 September 1919, departing from Southampton and accompanied by the Lapland to ensure the provisional service pending the return of the requisition ships and the arrival of new liners. From 1920 the Lapland was replaced by the Olympic. She was finally withdrawn after a lost crossing on 14 December 1921. In the view of the arrival of the Majestic and the Homerick after an overhaul in Belfast, she joined the Celtic and the Cedric and the Baltic on the Liverpool route on 13 May 1922. On a westbound voyage at 1.030 hours on 10 August 1922, near Cobb, the Adriatic suffered a gas explosion in her number 3 hold, which she was using as a reserve coal bunker. 
The explosion killed five crewmen, Serve severely injured another three, tore the hatch of the hold, broke and twisted grinders and beams and started to call fire. Some of, the, some of the dead and injured were stokers who had gone into the hold to work coal for her furnace. One was an electrician, Leslie Abbott, who was rigging a cluster of electric lights by which the stokers were to walk. Three were stokers who, were had, who had been sleeping in the open on the hatch cover because it was a hot summer night. One of the stokers sleeping on the hatch cover was blown overboard. Two liners, the CGT Lafayette and the United States Lines Reliance, changed course to come to the Adriatic's assistance. Adriatic's crew fought and, ex and extinguished the fire. That was my theory, I'm sorry. And extinguished the fire. A second engineer, James Corrigan, entered the burning hold and rescued two injured men. At 3.55 hours, Adriatic's wireless operator signaled that there, were no f that there was no further danger. So, Lafayette and Resilience resumed their normal courses. The injured were treated in a ship's sick bay. Two of the ship's stewardesses were trained nurses and helped to tend the injured and dying. All of the dead and injured were from Liverpool. Before Adriatic reached New York, her passengers raised five, five, seven thousand pounds to help their family. To help their families, Adriatic reached New York on 30 August. Marine insurance agents came on board and assessed, assessed, assessed the damage at less than one thousand pounds. Temporary repairs were made before she began her return voyage to Liverpool on 19 August. From 1923 onwards, the Big Four made regular stops in Boston before arriving in New York. In 1925, the Adriatic was charted by the Welsh people living in America who wanted to go to the Einstanford Canadiofall. I'm, I'm so sorry if I said it wrong. The same year, and despite her 18 years of age, she broke her speed record by crossing between New York and Liverpool in 7 days and 6 minutes. At the same time, with less transatlantic traffic, the Adriatic was increasingly used for cruises in 1928. When she returned from the, Medi from the Mediterranean, she was reconverted again, this time to become a cabin class ship offering more affordable rates, making her first crossing in the Cape of City on 28 April 1928. She quickly met with great success in this area. In 1929, cruises no longer managed to be profitable, profitable enough. The Adriatic was put to rest in Liverpool throughout the winter and the, as the economic crisis erupted. She was now only used during the summers. The arrival of the Britannic and the Georgic further contributed to rendering the Adriatic useless. She served as an experimental ground for a very low-cost weekend cruise in the summer of 1931, but the operation was inconclusive and her September cruises were cancelled in 1932. The Cedric was scrapped. She was followed the following year by the Baltic. Nevertheless, the company decided to keep the Adriatic as a reserve ship as the British economy seemed to recover little by little. The following summers were not, were not more pro prolific and the liner only made a few cruises of the Iberian Peninsula and the occasional crossings of the Atlantic. In, 1930, in 1943, Adriatic's code letters HKNV were surpassed by the call signs GLSJ. On 24 February 1943, 40, on 19, my Siri again, in 1933, the Adriatic made her last transatlantic crossing. 
after Gararic's successful 1933 peace cruise in the Baltic. In 1943, the British Boy Scouts and the Girl Guides charted her for a similar cruise with Robert Baden Powell on board her on board in the Mediterranean under the command of Commander C. P. Freeman. RD, RD Adriatic sailed from Liverpool on 26 March 1943 and called at Gibraltar, Sulamer, Malta, the Algiers and Lisbon. During that spring, White Star Line merges with its rival the Cunard Line. The Adriatic became part of the new fleet, but it was clearly, clearly super flaws given her age. After her last cruise in September, the, she was immobilized and sold in, in, and sold in November to Japanese wreckers for £84. She left Liverpool for the last time on 19 December 1943, her longest voyage ever to be scrapped at Osaka, Japan in 1935. And that is again the end of a ship story video. I hope you liked it. Um, so the Adriatic was, like the script, like I said, um, scrapped in 1935. Not knowing, of course, in that time that World War II would come around. So maybe when World War II would have broken out, she might have been a troop ship. Uh, it would have helped, I'm sure, uh, if if she was still around then. Um, but like I always say guys if you enjoyed this video please subscribe comment and like and if you have friends who like ships ocean liners uh, please show them in my channel we're trying to reach 200 subs and um, like I always say guys have a good night or day whatever you are and we will see each other on the next video bye bye